you look um, from the Enlightenment onwards, so right at the birth of modern Western science, there were certain assumptions about the human species, some to do with gender, for example, that women weren't the intellectual equals of men, mm -hmm. and some to do with race and ethnicity. So even the idea that we can be divided into discrete groups, that in itself is a political idea because it doesn't exist in biology. You know, there are there are no hard, discrete, uh, different human groups in biology. We're very homogeneous as a species. Well, those racialized assumptions were also baked in to scientific research from the start. And it's very difficult to let go of these ideas once they're deep rooted within you, once they're within establishments. It's very difficult to extricate yourself from that, especially when the world as a whole still uses these hierarchies. A hundred years ago, it was quite common in Britain for scientists to think about different classes being genetically different, that, that very poor people were somehow genetically weaker than wealthier people. And we don't think, or generally, we don't think in those terms anymore. But that's how we need to think about race. We need to think of it as a social quantity in the same way that we think about class as a social quantity. So that isn't to say that we shouldn't study it. We should study it, but we should study it as a social phenomenon, not as a biological phenomenon.